mean absolute deviation. Statistics about a data set often describes measures of center, such as the arithmetic mean, and the dispersion or spread of the data. Recall that the arithmetic mean is equal to the sum of the elements divided by the total number of elements in the set. The Greek letter mu is used to represent the arithmetic mean of a data set. One way to measure the variability of a data set is to measure the variation from the mean. And that's what we'll do today by calculating the mean absolute deviation. So to begin with, we're going to identify some of the symbols we'll be using. X sub i is an element of the data. Sigma is our summation notation, meaning just add them all together. And mu is our mean. So let's represent mu or mean using some of these symbols. When we find the mean of a number, we take each data element, which is x sub i, we add them all together, so we'll put a sigma in front of that, so we add all the data elements together, and then we divide by the number in the data set. So you've been doing this all along, and you didn't even know it. All right. So mean absolute deviation measures the variability of the data from the mean. So the formula we use to calculate the mean absolute deviation is we start with our data element of x sub i. Then we minus mu, our mean. We take the absolute value of that number. So now we have all these positive numbers and we're going to find the average of those. So we're going to add them all together. So we'll put a sigma here. Add all these numbers together, all these positive numbers together, and divide by the number of elements in the set, just like you take for the mean. So mean means average, absolute refers to absolute value, deviation is the distance from the mean. So if the mean absolute deviation is a small number, then the data is bunched closely together. And if the mean absolute deviation is a large number, then the data is more spread out and has a greater variability. So let's calculate the mean absolute deviation. Example 2. Last summer, Joe traveled with his parents to a city in each of the states that border Virginia from his home in Fairfax. He charted the distance he traveled to each state and wrote them in a list below. Find the mean absolute deviation of the distance Joe traveled. So here are the cities and how far he traveled. So the distance in miles is our data, ele are our data elements, x sub i. So we need to find the average of this data. In other words, we need to take x sub i, add it together with a sigma, and divide by n to find our mu. So go ahead and find the mean or the mu. And your mean should be 258. Our mean or our mu. All right, so the next thing we need to do is take that data element, x sub i, and subtract it from our, subtract mu from it. So in this instance, we would take 18 minus 258, 51 minus 258. So go ahead and do that and add it all together. And these are the numbers, and they should add to zero because half of the numbers should be above the mean and half of the numbers should be below the mean. So anytime we add them all together, we'll get zero. So that's not very helpful when we're trying to calculate a deviation. So we need to do one more thing so we can get a, a number here. 
we need to take the absolute value of this. So we need to take our data set, which we did. And we need to subtract the mu from it, which we did. Now we're going to take the absolute value of that. Okay? And once you do that, once you've taken your... Let me write it up here. Once you've taken x sub i and you minus your mu and you divided it, uh, you add, uh, took the absolute value, add them together, and then divide by n. So then you're going to take the average of this number and that's going to be your mean absolute deviation. So go ahead and do that. and it should be 178.8. And what does the mean absolute deviation tell you about the distance Joe traveled last summer? Can you conclude that her, his trip distances were about the same or varied greatly? Well, Joe's average trip, average trip varied greatly by about 179 miles. And we knew that by looking at the data. But sometimes you don't have the data to look at, and that's why you would calculate a mean absolute deviation. Or you'd have a lot of data to look at. All right, so example three. Last summer, Susie traveled with her parents to other cities in the surrounding states. She charted the distance that she traveled to each city and wrote them in a list below. Hey, just like Joe. Find the mean absolute deviation of the distance Susie traveled. So you can get you started. What we would do is we would find our mu by taking our x sub i, summing them and dividing by the number of elements. Then we would take that number, x sub i, minus our mu. Then we take that number, x sub i minus mu, take the absolute value, and then find the average of the absolute values to calculate our mean absolute deviation. Let's go ahead and do that. So the mean is 258 and the mean absolute deviation is 44.4 and Susie's average trip were about the same so they varied because they only varied about 44 miles so her trips were um, not as spread out as Joe's. So if we compare Joe and Susie, they both took five trips and they both traveled 1290 miles, which mean their which means their average trip was 258 miles. But when we calculated the mean absolute deviation, we saw that Joe had one of 178.8, a large number, and Susie had a much smaller number, 44.4. And we can see by looking at the data that her trips didn't vary as much as Joe's.